Hi, welcome back to Ollie's Workshop. Um, this is my CNC 3018. It's a very cheap uh, milling machine, uh, which you can use for doing circuit boards, wood, plastic. It's not really capable of doing aluminium. There's plenty of people on YouTube that have modded these to try and get them to do aluminium. Um, some, some more successful than others. But what I haven't seen is anyone turn one of these into a CNC lathe. Now, I really like the the Swiss lathe style of uh, CNC lathe. Uh, I'm not sure I can quite achieve that, but let's see what we can do. This is basically CNC Lego. You've got a control board which drives three stepper motors. You've got three axes, so you've got um, screws and rails, and you've got some extrusion, which can just be cut and reconfigured. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna strip this down and see what I can do to turn it into a CNC lathe. Just a closer look there, there's uh, one, two, three stepper motors. This is the control board. I mean, they, they literally just plug in, so you can choose whether you, you're driving X, Y, and Z with, with whichever motor. Um, there's a spindle um, control, which does, you can adjust the speed. Um, what else have we got? We've got a, a Z probe, and we've got some limit switches. And that's about it and a reset button. That's all the electrical bits off. Let's start dismantling the frame. Right, so that's that dismantled. We've got a bunch of extrusions. We've got the table. We've got one axis here and basically two axes in this assembly. So I'm thinking that this is going to make a good um, uh, saddle and cross slide. We'll take the motor out of here. So maybe we can just make an adapter that goes in this um, motor mount and just turns it into a square for a small lathe tool. Um, so we then need to work out how we're going to make a frame. Obviously a lathe has only got two major axes. The third axis I'm hoping to use as a rotating tool changer, but one step at a time. Let's get it working. So we've got the motor mounted on a couple of extrusions there. Um, I've got the little right angle brackets on there. I'm going to pick up on this. Can you see it? Yeah, this rail and this rail. Um, but to get it to the right height, I'm going to need some spacers. So I'm going to make some four 38 millimeter high M5 male to female spacers because I haven't got any bolts that are long enough. Otherwise, I'd do tubular spacers, it'd be a lot easier. Tidy up that end and drill and tap it, M5. So we're going for a blind hole, so I'm going to use my um, spiral flute tap set. Um, 
I'm tapping M5, so we're on M5 tap, and a 4.2 drill. Holes don't need to be terribly deep because the screws aren't very long. Um, what are they sticking out by? They're sticking out by less than 10 millimetres. M5 male to female. Okay, let's just try this for size before we get carried away. Make another three of them. Um, I've stuck the nut on the bottom there. That's just going to slot in there. Tighten up. Uh, Use that one in. That's sitting ever so slightly above the centre line. It's a bit hard to tell because it's not completely constrained yet. Um, but um, oh yeah, so I'm going to have to make some sort of an adjustable insert for this to take this, uh, this little boring bar, which I'll use. You can use for turning, um, as well as boring. Okay, so I mean, that sound seems about right. Let's make three more. I noticed it was wobbling just there, so I've added a little undercut underneath the um, thread just to relieve it, so that when the nut, because the nut's got a little uh, sort of collar that comes right up. When it's in the extrusion, it, it does come pretty much right up to the, the end there, and it was bottoming out on the not quite cut thread, so uh, I'll have to do that to the rest of them as well. So I 3D printed an adapter for the, um, the tool. That's uh, grub screwed in there. Um, for what that's worth and then that fits into there and then that allows me to adjust the the height while keeping the tool level um, in this uh, clamp system and then the, the screw clamp here just squeezes it all together so I'll get that set up and we will do a cut so I've set my zero by positioning the, the tip of the tool on the center of the work and um, in the Z plane um, it's just touching the end of the work so if I power the machine up like that it comes up at zero zero I've created a model in Fusion 360 and created a toolpath from that model which is basically just a simple profile turn so I will run that now and you will see what it looks like so that's just the tool moving to a safe position to start That's it complete. So clearly that wasn't the finest uh, bit of turning that ever took place, but it proves the point that it, it kind of works. Um, that was a fun little um, diversion for me. Um, if you enjoyed that and you'd be interested in me making this somewhat better, more rigid, um, proper tool post, etc., um, I have tried parting this and it's not pretty <laughs> um, it's just there's just not enough rigidity to do parting um, yeah so if you're interested in seeing this develop a bit further um, leave me a comment um, 
Otherwise, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.